Duff Cooper. Alfred Duff Cooper, 1st Viscount Norwich, 22 February 1891, January 1954, known as Duff Cooper, was a British Conservative Party politician, diplomat and military and political historian. First elected to Parliament in 1924, he lost his seat in 1929 but returned to Parliament in the 1931 Westminster St. George's by election, which was seen as a referendum on Stanley Baldwin's leadership of the Conservative Party. He later served in the Cabinet as Secretary of State for War and First Lord of the Admiralty. In the intense political debates of the late 1930s over appeasement, he first put his trust in the League of Nations, and later realized that war with Germany was inevitable. He denounced the Munich Agreement of 1938 as meaningless, cowardly, and unworkable, as he resigned from the cabinet. When Winston Churchill became prime minister in May 1940, he named Cooper as Minister of Information. From 1941, he served in numerous diplomatic roles. He also served an important role as representative to Charles de Gaulle's Free France 1943-44 and ambassador to France from 1944 to 1948. Background and Education Duff Cooper, he was always known as Duff rather than Alfred, was born at Cavendish Square. He was the only son of fashionable society doctor Sir Alfred Cooper, 1843-1908, a surgeon and specialist in the sexual problems of the upper classes, and Lady Agnes Duff, daughter of James Duff, 5th Earl Fife. She had already eloped with two husbands, the first of whom she deserted and the second of whom died, before marrying Cooper in 1882. Duff Cooper had three older sisters and one older half-sister from his mother's first marriage. He had royal connections. His maternal uncle, the first Duke of Fife, was married to Louise, Princess Royal. Cooper enjoyed a typical gentleman's upbringing of country estates and London society. He attended two prep schools, including Wixenford School. He was unhappy at prep school, but was then very happy at Eton College. One of his maternal great-grandmothers was Lady Elizabeth Fitzclarence, an illegitimate daughter of King William Roman IV, who fathered eight children with Dorothea Jordan. Oxford and early career. At New College, Oxford, 1908-11, his Eton friendship with John Neville Manners won him entry into a famous circle of young aristocrats and intellectuals known as the Coterie, including Patrick Shaw Stewart, Raymond Asquith, Sir Denys Anson, Edward Horner, and the celebrated Lady Diana Manners. He cultivated a reputation for eloquence and fast living, and although he had established a reputation, as a poet, he earned an even stronger reputation for gambling, womanizing, and drinking in his studied emulation of the life of the 18th and 19th century Whig statesman Charles James Fox. Cooper's memory and gift for writing enabled him to do well at exams. He narrowly missed a first in modern history. Following Oxford, Cooper entered the Foreign Service in October 1913 at the third attempt. During the war, he worked in the commercial and the contraband departments. Owing to the national importance of his work at the cipher desk, he was exempted from military service until June 1917, when he joined the Grenadier Guards. He had not actively sought to join the army, but was happy to be released as a result of the manpower shortage, as he thought joining the army the decent thing to do. To his surprise, most of his fellow officer cadets were working-class and lower-middle-class men, almost all of whom had already served in the ranks. He spent six months at the front in the guards, where he proved himself to be both brave and a natural leader. He suffered a minor wound in the advance to the Albert Canal in August 1918, and was awarded the Distinguished Service Order DSO for conspicuous gallantry, a rare decoration for a junior officer. Almost all his closest friends, including Shaw Stewart, Horner, and Asquith were killed in the war, drawing him closer to Lady Diana Manners, an extremely popular social figure hailed for her beauty and eccentricities. Post-war and marriage. After demobilization, he returned to the Egypt Department 
and was then private secretary to the parliamentary undersecretary, i.e. assistant to the junior minister. He needed money to enter politics. He played a significant role in the Egyptian and Turkish crises in the early 1920s. On 2 June 1919, he married Lady Diana Manners, whose family were initially opposed to the match. Diana's mother in particular thought Duff a promiscuous drinker and gambler, without title, position, or wealth. Diana was officially the daughter of the 8th Duke of Rutland, but was widely believed, including by herself, to be the natural daughter of Harry Cust, a Belvoir Castle neighbor and MP. In 1923, Lady Diana played the Madonna in the Max Rian Hart play The Miracle. The money enabled Cooper to resign from the Foreign Office in July 1924. Lady Diana tolerated Cooper's numerous affairs. These included the Franco-American singer sewing machine heiress Daisy Fellows, the socialite Gloria Guinness, the French no Political career 1924-39, 1924-31, in and out of Parliament. Within weeks, Cooper was selected for the winnable seat of Oldham, where he was elected at the general election in October 1924 with a 13,000 majority over the sitting Labour member. He made a very successful maiden speech on Egypt, which was praised by H. A. L. Fisher, who spoke next. The speech was also praised by several newspaper accounts. He was seen as a coming man within the party. Cooper was a stalwart supporter of Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin and a friend of Chancellor of the Exchequer, Winston Churchill. In January 1928, he was appointed Financial Secretary to the War Office, not a job he would have chosen. The Secretary of State Sir Laming Worthington Evans gave him a lot of responsibility. He very likely would have been promoted if the Conservatives had won the election in 1929, but they were defeated and Cooper lost his own seat. John Julius, his only legitimate child, was born in 1929. Out of Parliament, Cooper wrote a biography of the French statesman Tolerant. He wrote slowly but seldom needed to revise his drafts. Philip Ziegler writes that rarely can subject and author have been more satisfactorily matched as both men were worldly and disliked cat. The book was eventually published in 1932 by his nephew Rupert Hart Davis to critical praise and lasting success. 1931-1935 by election and junior minister. The March 1931 by election for the constituency of Westminster St. George's caused by the death of Cooper's recent boss, Laming Worthington Evans, saw Beaverbrook's Empire Free Trade Crusade Party threatening the conservative position at a time when satisfaction with Baldwin's leadership was at a low. When the original conservative candidate stepped down, Duff Cooper agreed to contest the election in what was regarded as a referendum on Baldwin's leadership. He won the seat with a majority of 5,710, thus returning to Parliament and serving until 1945. In August 1931, on the formation of the national government, he was appointed financial secretary to the War Office under the elderly Lord Crewe, who left Cooper to do a great deal of the work. In June 1934, he was appointed financial secretary to the Treasury, a traditional stepping stone to the cabinet. This brought him close to the Chancellor of the Exchequer Neville Chamberlain, who thought highly of him. He had been to Germany and had seen and been appalled by a Nuremberg rally. Chamberlain told him to tone down his criticisms of Hitler. Cooper urged rearmament, not then a fashionable view and brief Churchill, then on the back benches, that Hitler was serious and wanted war. Cooper wrote the official biography of Field Marshal Haig, which appeared in 1935 and 1936. It was criticized for pro Haig bias and what Ziegler calls lack of consideration. 1935-1938, Cabinet and Resignation In November 1935, after the general election, Cooper was promoted to the Cabinet as Secretary of State for War and appointed to the Privy Council. During the abdication crisis, he was sympathetic to Edward Roman VIII and to the possibility of a morganatic marriage, and in vain advised him to wait 
until after his coronation due in 1937, before picking a fight with the government over his plans to marry Wallace Simpson. He felt out of kilter with the conservative leadership and was surprised when the new Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain appointed him First Lord of the Admiralty in May 1937. Philip Ziegler writes that his tenure of office was an unequivocal success. He enjoyed high living on board the Admiralty yacht HMS Enchantress, but fought Chamberlain and the Chancellor of the Exchequer Sir John Simon for more spending on the Royal Navy. Chamberlain saw him as indiscreet and as a firebrand. By the time of the Munich Agreement, Cooper was isolated in the Cabinet as the most public critic of Chamberlain's appeasement policy. On 3 October 1938, a few days after the Munich Agreement, he denounced it and resigned from the Cabinet. On doing so, he said, war with honor or peace with dishonor, he might have been persuaded to accept but war with dishonor, that was too much. Fellow appeasement critic and conservative party MP Vivian Adams described Cooper's actions as the first step in the road back to national sanity. As a backbencher, he joined the coterie around Antony Eden, who had resigned as Foreign Secretary in February 1938, but made only muted criticisms of the government. His main source of income was writing articles for the Evening Standard. He argued for an Anglo-French alliance. Second World War By now German propaganda ranked Cooper with Churchill and Eden as Britain's most dangerous conservative warmongers. Unlike the other two, Cooper was not offered a job on the outbreak of war in September 1939. He went on a lecture tour of the U.S., where he called for the democracies to stand firm against the dictatorships and predicted that Churchill would become Prime Minister, which seemed an eccentric prediction at the time. From May 1940 he was Minister of Information under Churchill, but disliked the job. His son John Julius said that his father was out of sympathy with the job from the beginning because he was opposed to censorship. The press, led by the newspaper magnate Lord Beaverbrook and his Daily Express, portrayed Cooper as a spin doctor and as an enemy of a free press. His inquirers into the state of public morale were known as Cooper's snoopers. He authorized a strong denunciation of the author P. G. Wodehouse for making an ill-advised humorous broadcast from Berlin. He and Lady Diana sent their 11-year-old son John Julius to the U.S. in 1940, as they feared that Cooper being on Hitler's blacklist might lead to their son being killed or taken as a hostage in the event of a German invasion. This earned Cooper further criticism in the press and some hostile questioning from MP in Parliament. John Julius returned two years later. In July 1941 he was appointed Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster to his relief. He was sent to Singapore as Minister Resident, charged with reporting on the situation in the Far East and the state of British defences. He had the authority to form a war cabinet there, but both military and civil authorities were reluctant to cooperate with him. To his relief, Archibald Wavell was appointed Supreme, Commander Abda. He was unfairly, in Philip Ziegler's view, blamed for the fall of Singapore after his return to the UK. Eighteen months of underemployment followed. He chaired the Cabinet Committee on Security. He did a lot of writing and spent his weekends at Bonner, where his wife had a small holding. Ambassador to France. In December 1943, Cooper was appointed British representative on the Free French Committee of National Liberation, FCLN. His remit included maintaining a working relationship between Churchill and de Gaulle, two men whom he found equally difficult. Paris was liberated in August 1944, and he moved there in September. On 18 November 1944, he formally presented his credentials as British ambassador to France. He was to prove a very popular ambassador, with Lady Diana helping to make his term of office a great social success. Some contemporary eyebrows were raised at his willingness to entertain people with dubious records during the recent war or his lack of interest at entertaining trade unionists. In the words of the British historian P.M. H. Bell, Cooper was such a devoted Francophile 
that during his time as ambassador to Paris he often tried the patience of the foreign office by going well beyond his instructions to maintain good relations with France by trying to create an ang. 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 Despite being a conservative, Cooper was not replaced as ambassador when Labour won the 1945 election as Ernest Bevan, the new foreign secretary, valued an ambassador who was close friends with so many French politicians and even managed to have a friendship of sorts with the famously anglophobic Charles de Gaulle. In January 1947, Cooper, acting without orders, began the process that led to the Treaty of Dunkirk, when he suggested to the French Premier Leon Blum that there should an Anglo-French military alliance, an idea Blum took up thinking this was an offer from London. The treaty which fulfilled his long-held desire for an Anglo-French alliance was signed on 4 March 1947. Cooper's term as ambassador ended at the end of 1947. He bequeathed a large part of his library to the British Embassy in Paris. To the dismay of his successor, he remained in Paris, living at the Chateau St. Fermin in the Park of Chantilly. Family Thuff Cooper was married to Lady Diana Manners from 1919 to his death. He was unfaithful to Diana throughout the marriage. Cooper's only in wedlock child, John Julius Norwich, 1929-2018, whose godfather was Lord Beaverbrook, became well known as a writer and television host. His granddaughter Artemis Cooper has published several books, including A Durable Fire, The Letters of Duff and Diana Cooper, 1913-50. Another granddaughter is screenwriter Allegra Huston, the only child of Norwich and Enrica Soma Huston, estranged wife of the American film director John Huston. Duff Cooper's niece Annie Blevita, daughter of his sister Stephanie, is the paternal grandmother of the Conservative Party leader David Cameron, who served as Prime Minister from 2010 to 2016. Retirement Cooper was raised to the Order of St. Michael and St. George GCMG in 1948. He took on some company directorships, including that of the Wagons Litz Company, but essentially devoted the rest of his life to writing. During the war, he had written A Life of the Biblical King David, and in 1949 he published Sergeant Shakespeare, a book about Shakespeare's early life. The Cabinet Office tried in vain, on security grounds, to block publication of his only novel, Operation Heartbreak 1950, as it was based on the real Operation Mincemeat, a successful British deception operation of the Second World or to disguise the 1943 Allied invasion of Sicily. The book has recently been republished by Persephone Books. He was created Viscount Norwich of Aldwick in the county of Sussex in 1952, in recognition of his political and literary career. The title was not popular with some of the local dignitaries. His wife refused to be called Lady Norwich, claiming that it sounded too much like porridge and promptly took out a newspaper advertisement, declaring that she would retain her previous style of Lady Diana Cooper. Cooper's sixth and final book was his acclaimed memoirs, Old Men Forget, which appeared on 5 July 1953. The Duff Cooper Diaries, 1915-1951, edited by his son John Julius Norwich, appeared posthumously in 2005. Death. Cooper was intemperate in his drinking and eating habits throughout his adult life. As a result, in later life he developed cirrhosis of the liver and esophageal varices. This resulted in him suffering a fatal gastrointestinal hemorrhage on 31 December 1953 when he was on board the French liner Columbi. The ship's doctor was unable to arrest the bleeding and he died suddenly from hypovolemic shock on 1 January 1954, aged 63. The ship docked at the Spanish port of Vigo so his body could be flown back to England, where he was buried in the mausoleum of the Manners family at Belvoir Castle in the Vale of Belvoir, Leicestershire. His estate was valued for probate at £14,303, Thevens equivalent to £400,000. Legacy after Cooper's death, a British literary award, the Duff Cooper Prize, was established in his name. 
His biographer Philip Ziegler wrote that Cooper was not totally successful in worldly terms, but never dull. He was arrogant, self-indulgent and selfish, and devoted far too much time and energy to wine, women, gambling. However, he was never mean or ignoble, and was a proud patriot, who sometimes had true nobility, although he was too proud to court popularity and too reserved to attract it readily. On 28 November 2021, Duff Cooper was posthumously awarded with highest degree Grand Cross of the Order of the White Lion, the highest decoration of Czechoslovakia and Czech Republic for especially meritorious services to Czechoslovakia for his stand on and actions against the Munich Agreement. In popular culture, H. G. Wells, in The Shape of Things to Come, which was published in 1934, predicted a Second World War in which Britain would not participate, but would vainly try to effect a peaceful compromise. In this vision, Duff Cooper was mentioned as one of several prominent Britons delivering brilliant Pacific speeches which echo throughout Europe, but fail to end the war. The other would be peacemakers. In Wells' vision, included Leslie Horbelisha, Ellen Wilkinson, and Randolph Churchill. Arms Ancestry